Come on, I'm trying to film a video here. Hey guys, sorry, just uh, plugging in my new Rode Video Micro. Whether you guys are just starting out in vlogging or filmmaking, or maybe you're really experienced and you're just looking for an easy peasy little no battery on camera microphone to enhance the audio quality in your videos, then this Rode Video Micro is for you. Now, I shoot all of my videos on the Sony a7 II, which actually has a pretty good internal built-in microphone, but I didn't realize the difference that a small investment like the Rode Video Micro would totally make in changing the quality of my videos just through audio. I am not claiming to be a microphone expert by any means. I have a few lavalier mics and a few voiceover mics in my kit, but nothing really extreme. So this review is going to be a strictly non super technical review I'm just gonna be giving you my overall thoughts about the mic having used it not knowing a ton about it I'm also gonna show you guys loads of test footage clips so you can see and hear how this microphone really handles loads of different scenarios including wind cars, inside, outside, other background noises, etc. I did a bit of research and a few people suggested to change the internal mic input level to 13 for my Sony a7 II camera. It's automatically set at 26, but when I plug in the Rode Video Micro, 26 is too high and it generally causes this hissing sound or it makes the audio levels just peak out way too high. So everything recorded on the Rode Video Micro in today's video is at the input level of 13. So quickly, here are just a few things that I really think that you all should know before I go into the test footage. There is no battery or charging required at all. This is absolutely amazing because most microphones out there either have some sort of battery or charger port that you have to have. This has none of that. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I already have in my kit loads of batteries for cameras, lights, mics, etc. So if I can have something that doesn't have a battery or a charger that I have to keep track of and haul around, that is amazing in my book. You also don't have to worry about the battery running out mid-film and not being able to hear anything because the sound cut out and you didn't realize until the end of your filming. It also comes with this nifty little windsock that fits perfectly right over the top of the mic and is intended for outdoor use generally. It's um, mainly just to block out wind, cars, other sort of background noises. It does, however, not save your hair from windy days, so that is what this hat is for. The suspension mount is what holds the mic steady and bouncy in this little red mount that attaches the mic to the top of your camera. It helps with noise reduction if you bang your camera or move it around too quickly. It's kind of like a support pillow for your mic. You can't turn away from the microphone as you will lose the sound of your voice because it's a one directional microphone. That is, it is a one directional microphone, so it will start to cut out if you turn away from it. You should really try and stay about an arm's length away from your camera microphone setup as that's really the best pickup range for this type of vlogging mic, but it does depend on how loudly you speak and also your surroundings. The mic when it's plugged into the top of your camera is a really nice little compact size, but the wind sock does make it a bit more noticeable and large feeling, um, which can be a bit overwhelming or just a bit more noticeable if you're trying to be more incognito. The the price for this Rode Video Micro though is really unbeatable and unbelievable. I got it for £52 on Amazon and I will link it below where you can buy it on Amazon in the USA and also Amazon in the UK. The quality of both the audio and the design are just so nice and similar mics are coming in a lot pricier. So now let's move on to the moment most of you have probably been waiting for which is test footage. So all of this video has been filmed in this room, in this setting with the Rode Video Micro without the wind sock on. I also have a lot of construction that seems to be happening outside of my window. So I've been filming everything sort of in between those construction bits. This is the audio from the Rode Video Micro in my studio room, which is not exactly soundproofed for audio. So all of the walls are not covered with anything. They're just 
plain walls. I know you're supposed to have those tiles that absorb the sound, but I don't have any of those. And I also have all hardwood flooring. I do have quite a bit of furniture and equipment in here that may absorb the sound. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't have the wind sock on and maybe that would help with some of the construction sound. So right now I'm gonna give you guys just the room sound. I don't know if you guys can hear that construction sound, but I can hear it. Now I am going to put on the wind sock and see if maybe that makes a difference in the audio sound in this room and also makes a difference in the fact that it's picking up this construction sound outside. All right, so now I've put the wind sock on. I don't know if it's even recording the audio as I haven't exactly tested this yet, but hopefully it sounds similar, if not better. Um, I'm still in the studio room. Nothing has changed in the actual room setting. I've only put the wind sock over the microphone. Now I'm gonna let you see if you can hear a difference in the, the room sound and also the construction sound outside. So you're now hearing the audio quality from the Rode Video Micro outside um, on a relatively quiet street with the windsock on. Um, I just put the windsock on because it's not necessarily super windy. <laughs> Somebody's got their car speakers on. Um, so it's not necessarily super windy today. It's actually not really windy at all, but I am walking So I thought I would try it with the windsock on and also with the windsock off just so you can see the difference So I'm gonna just let you hear the outside noise now with the windsock on Okay, and now I am gonna go ahead and take the windsock off and remember this is a super quiet road So not even really one car has passed since um, this specific video recording Okay, so now I'm still on the same sort of very quiet road um, But now I have taken the windsock off of the microphone. So this is just the video micro um, Without the windsock and I'll let you hear the outside noise itself is kind of bouncing around but hopefully that suspension mount is keeping the sound very clear. There's a bit of wind happening right now and that same sort of just light light wind was happening with the windsock on so you guys can make the judgment call as to if the windsock really does help the audio quality in um, in the outside. So the wind definitely picked up. It, I think it's gonna rain, so it's quite windy right now. You can hear, I've put the windsock back on. That was quite a loud car. But so the windsock is on right now, um, and you just heard it with a car going by and also with the wind, um, because I wanted you to hear for sure the same amount of wind as it had with the windsock off, because it seemed like it was really handling it really badly with the windsock off. So I put the windsock back on, so just, just so you could see in a real, and I'll stop walking now, so this is standing in the wind. There's a plane flying over, so I don't know if you can hear that. But this is standing in light wind now with the windsock on and a plane flying over. Okay, I'll go ahead and start walking again. So I just want to make sure you're getting really the best quality of how this microphone is handling the wind scenarios and the just outside without wind. Um, you can definitely hear the birds. Um, but I think that as far as having the microphone outside, it definitely does better with the wind sock on. Whether there's a lot of wind or not, it's just, I think, better and clearer if you're in the studio. I always keep the windsock off 
I never have it on really in the studio, so I think it's amazing that it comes with the windsock included. Um, just because you definitely need it if you're gonna be doing any sort of vlogging outside. Now, it seems like when I checked back on that audio that it was really peaking out super high, so I've turned down the input level to seven instead of 13, just to see if that makes a difference or if it just brings down the audio levels of my voice. So right now I'm sort of still on a quiet road and I've turned down the input levels to seven. Car passes by. So you can see what it sounds like if a car is passing by while I'm also speaking with the input levels at seven. For the rest of this test footage, I've decided that I'm going to keep the audio levels at the input of seven because when I checked back on it, it really just sounded like it was a better input level for the microphone because it was peaking out at negative 13. Sorry, not negative 13, just 13 input level. Whereas with the internal mics, generally they're set to 26 automatically. So for the rest of this test footage, I'm going to keep it right at the input level of 13. I'm also going to keep the windsock on because one, it is quite windy, and two, just being outside, the windsock sounds better on the microphone than without it on the microphone. I'm also on quite a busy road right now, so you can hear lots of cars going by. Um, the microphone, the windsock should be helping that, but the microphone is still, of course, gonna pick that up a bit. So that's the test footage on a quite a busy road with the microphone. And the input level's at seven. We're off of the busy roads, off of the roads completely, and I am now in a park. This is a really big park, um, and it is relatively filled with people. Um, so you can hear probably some people in the background, um, probably a lot going on. I've now stopped, so I'm not walking anymore. The windsock is on the microphone, and the input levels are at seven. I'll let you hear the background noise. I can hear it picking up the birds as well. Now this is a one directional mic, so it is just gonna be picking up when I'm speaking to the microphone. If I turn away from the microphone, then you really can't hear it as well. But I think this is pretty good audio quality. You can definitely change the input levels depending on your camera. The camera is going to make a difference, I think, to that. Um, when I looked it up, people said that for the Sony a7 II that the input level should be at 13. But I found just testing it outside that it seems to be working better with the input level at 7. Also, I've noticed that when you walk with this microphone, that it is very similar to wind. So even if you don't have any wind happening, if you're walking, you're gonna get some wind and some bounce in the microphone um, just because you're moving around. But I think overall, this sounds really pretty good um, for a $52 microphone. Uh, <laughs> with no battery and just plug straight in. It's pretty good. So here I wanted to give you guys one more clip because with the first two clips when I had the windsock on and off, um, it was at 13 input level. Now that I've turned the input level down to seven, I have the input level at seven and the windsock on. There's a um, car passing by so you can see how that sounds while I'm speaking. There's light wind gusts happening, but I think it's just handling so much better. Now that I've turned the input level down to seven, I don't think you really got a clear picture from the first um, recording at 13. 
A good thing to remember is that your audio quality is just as important as your video quality. Listening to bad audio will make someone click off of your video really quickly, whereas good audio can actually enhance even a mediocre video. Even if you already have bigger, better, more expensive microphones, the Rode Video Micro is a really great investment even as a backup or a second tier mic. You really can't go wrong having one of these on hand, so I definitely recommend the Rode Video Micro micro to anyone looking for a cheaper mic to enhance the audio quality in their videos because it definitely gives you a major return on a minimal investment. I would love to see all of you on Instagram and you can follow me at Gabrielle Ruddick for more in my everyday life and to see more of my photo and film work. Also, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for my weekly video updates all about photography and filmmaking. I make all sorts of fun tips editing videos, and much, much more from beginner to advanced levels. Finally, if you guys have any questions or there's any videos you would specifically like to see, just pop a comment below and I will get back to you. I am literally now filming everything in this video in between sounds every few minutes of drilling out my window. <laughs> Can you guys hear this? So loud. I had to uh, stop and take a break until some of these noises sort of subsided. Yeah. No, Gentry, go lay down. Go on. Is he gonna walk away? Should we let him in? Add to the noise.